All right, guys, I'm actually in my garage tonight. The Viper over there. And uh, got the front done, the rear done. And now I've got a sweet little kit from uh, Airlift. Uh, Airlift makes some really good stuff. Um, usually bags and, and other things like that. Uh, this is actually a kit they sell specifically for air shocks. It's mainly for trucks. And it has a line set that would run all the way to the back of the truck and you could pump up the, the bed, you know, back and forth. Um, but a lot of people use them on bugs and they, they will actually just attach directly to the lines that are there. Uh, if you only have the front, it's fine. Uh, they do sell a double set, but it's pretty expensive. It's like double the, the price to do that. Um, so <laughs> I've uh, devised a way to, to make it work. Uh, I think both sides and, and I'm gonna see if we can do that and see what happens. The, this is what all it comes with. So the first thing we got out of here is the gauge set. And uh, there's a gauge in there. You've got a switch to run the pump. You've got a line that runs to the gauge and then to this, which is actually a bleeder valve for you to bleed the pressure off. Uh, and it's not a bad looking gauge. I mean, like I said, airlift is pretty good stuff. Um, got uh, a little three-way there. Got some wires, got all of the connectors that you need. They give you a ton of wire. And it, like, I really don't even know that you need this much in most applications. Um, but everything's there. You got uh, the actual line and they give you plenty of line and that's mainly so you can run all the way back to our truck. Uh, and this is typical uh, air brake line for a big rig, quarter inch. And it's got the fitting on there, which will connect to the Schrader valve if you're running one set. So I can use that one. However, uh, I bought some other ones here. Um, So the other ones I bought here um, will screw on. Uh, this actually spins here. This is for an air tool. Uh, and then the other side is actually a female quarter inch uh, NTP or MP, NPT. And, uh, but anyways, these will screw on. So I bought these so I can have two of them. I also got these and these are quarter inch uh, NPT and then quarter inch uh, hose line like that. Um, and these are the push to connect fittings. And then I've also got the quarter inch push to connect with eighth inch uh, fittings on here. Uh, and then I've got something else. So my, my idea is that I really only need two of these to hook up this. And then I can hook this kind of line to them. I can hook those into the two that are under for the front and for the rear. So that's hooked up. Running it back to this would normally have one line that comes to the compressor. It would go to the, the front air shocks and then to the gauge. Um, I'm gonna split that and run it um, still to, to one set and then hopefully to the other. Uh, and the way I'm gonna do that is with this right here. So this, is a, a pneumatic valve and it's pretty tiny actually but uh there you go yeah s and s uh that's that's the part number i got most all of this off of amazon to be honest with you um that's the amazon part number i suppose um this valve is um hopefully uh you've got the p the r and the A, and according to this, uh, when it's down, it looks like uh, P and R are open. When you push up, A is open. So uh, I'll test all that and make sure. Uh, but literally, it looks just like a toggle switch. Uh, and this is pretty tiny. This happened to be eighth inch with the one I bought, and I probably could have bought a, a quarter, but, but this is nice and small. So that's why I needed the eighth inch fittings there. Uh, whereas these are quarter, um, and this is MPT does not mean it's a literal eighth of inch. It's eighth inch pipe thread. That's quarter inch pipe thread. Um, so it's, it's, it's definitely a little bigger. 
And this says eighth inch um, pipe thread, but it doesn't seem exactly like it is. I think it'll work and fit. Um, so we'll see, but I, it could be a really cool idea if it works. So that'll allow me to split. Instead of going to one set, I'll be able to flip and put it on the other set. And the gauge will read either set that I'm on. Um, so I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, should be pretty simple. All right, guys, this little box here is the compressor. Now I just ran a line through this, put the fittings on here, and went ahead and hooked up just to the front, and it actually worked. It raised the vehicle up. You can see here, flipping this back and forth, lets out a little bit of air, but it only lets it out into this port. And then if I run this port, it just blows air out. This one seals and will pump up the front. So this actually shouldn't work. So I'm gonna try it. All right, that works. Right now I'm just touching the ground over here, but my switch actually works. So my inline coming in, which is actually A, um, and then it goes either side, but this is uh, probably primary and reserve or something. I don't know what those are. Um, but this is back, this is the rear. This is the front, rear, front. So I'll just mount it in the car pretty much just like that. And I went ahead and used the one they sent here. And then this is uh, the one that I got and made work. And it was a little bit leaky, so I had some tape to it, some Teflon tape, but it's hooked up, it's working. So now I just gonna make the switch work, make the gauge work. Look how nice this gauge is. It's actually metal and uh, that's your bleeder right now. I don't have actually a way to bleed off the pressure until I uh, cut a line, decide where I'm gonna put this thing in at, which is not a huge deal either. Uh, another thing that's good are these cutters here. So what's this? So, there we go. That's how you make the car lower really, really quickly. <laughs> All right, here's where we're at. So I've got my switch mounted here, so it's easier for me to get to. I can just flip that right under me. And then I'm gonna mount the gauge unit up in there and then run my hose to the gauge, which is this one, down through one of my old holes. So I've got the line coming from the compressor. It tees off here and goes over to my gauge and the bleeder. And then it goes on and then it splits into front or rear and goes back into my normal lines right down here. So pretty simple. It's just taking me a little bit to figure it out. Um, had it all in my head and making it fit is a different story. So now I'm gonna go ahead and mount the gauge and there's my two original uh, holes there. I'm actually gonna mount this like right in here somewhere. It's a little bit hidden. Um, you have to lean down, it's just cause this pad. One day if I remove the pad, it won't be bad at all actually, but, but somewhere right in there, it seems like to be the best and it is out of the way even though it kind of looks like it wouldn't. Um, I thought about putting it down here, but these things usually have a tendency to leak. And I don't want all this getting wet, so I think that's gonna be plenty fine. And then my lines are actually just right there. And the back of this, I need to run a switch on my hot wire into this, hook it up and go, and then this will be some, some lights uh, on here for the gauge, which I can hook up um, anytime. Uh, so I can work on that later, um, but get the line hooked up and then run the wire I've got now that's running just through this switch and out, and it should be good. I've got it set to a full-time positive. It is on its own blade fuse in there, um, which should be fine. Um, I want to be able to raise it up and down without the switch being on, so it will be good. All right, there's the gauge. Got my hose connected here, bleeder, switch. It's gonna get that wired and it should be good. All right guys, they sent you a bunch of terminals. Uh, the bigger ones here um, and some others in there. A whole ton of wires. So given if we were putting this on a big pickup truck, it would 
you know, we might need all that. For this, we don't need very much at all. So we've got a main hot coming over. It's fused going into the switch, out of the switch and into the compressor. Now there's small terminals that go on this side. So as these come through, these are actually much smaller. I mean, it's hard to tell on camera, but they fit on these. So much smaller. All right, guys, last thing left is the ground. And it comes with these uh, self-tapping screws right here. It came for some for the little dash plate, um, some little tiny ones. But it comes with these, which are pretty big. Um, should hold it down fine. I'm gonna run all four. But since this is, I mean, it is plastic, but it's going on metal right here. I'm gonna try to mount it down somewhere right here. And this thing is tiny, you know. But I'd really like to mount it like in this square block. But uh, somewhere right here, but I've got these old rubber floor mats. I mean, they're actually brand new. Uh, but I didn't use the rears uh, for something. So my wife tells me I shouldn't keep crap like this, but you know, look who's the hoarder now. All right, got a couple little strips of rubber under there. Got the ground uh, on there and it's mounted in there pretty solid. It's still rubber mounted, so it's not crazy loud. Again, the, the line comes over here, splits off this way, goes to the gauge and feeds each side, front and rear, based on that little switch. And I can flip either way and uh, seems to be working. Check this out. So I just tried it. This is the front aired all the way up. That's pretty much as far as you could make it go. And the rear, it was still coming up a little bit, but because it kind of lays the tires out, it's got to pull the tires back in as it raises these things up. So they're really hard to raise up in the rear unless you've got a bag system and uh, you're not putting the shock in a bind. It was still going up, but the best thing to do is press the, the button and actually rock the car back and forth and it'll actually work its way up a little bit easier because you help pull the tire in as you rock it. So if you check out this video, you can see that this is before I did any suspension work. So you can see here, we're pretty much back at stock height from where it was. Uh, so this little compressor puts out some pressure. Now the valve is causing the, um, the gauge to actually read higher than what the, the uh, lines are getting, but I imagine that would slowly level out because it was getting up pretty high. Um, but I think it's cause it's having to force its way through that valve before it actually gets anywhere. So, but it seems to be working. It's flipping back and forth and, and uh, I was able to raise the back and leave the front end at zero, flip it over and the gauge went to zero and then lift it up the front. So I think this is gonna work. All right guys, so there it is. You see I taped up the, the lines back there, the wires or whatever. And you can see right now it's saying the gauge is right at 100 pounds. There it goes. And I can feel it hit down right then. There we go. That's pretty much all the way back down now, which is down a little bit further than it was doing before, um, especially in the rear. And the more we use it, the better it's gonna start working.
right, guys. Don't forget, you can get $25 off of ceramic coating, the Armor Shield 9 from Avalon King, uh, by putting High Revs 25 in at checkout at avalonking.com. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and share on this video for your chance to win the AMR500 Supercharger.